Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on Wednesday, the 30th of September uh, 2020 on Vision Store's first Exploring Technology with David Woodbridge webinar on Exploring Accessible Products. My name is Tony, and I will be one of your hosts today, and I'm joined by my fellow colleagues, David Woodbridge, who is our National Retail AT Advisor, and Amanda Dazali, who is one of our orthoptists and retail state lead. I would like to begin the session by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. I would also like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Please note that the webinar is being recorded for those that cannot stay for the entire session and you can access the recording later via our Vision Australia and Vision Store YouTube channel. This is an interactive session, so please submit any questions that you may have to David or Amanda throughout the session by using our chat box. For those that use a screen reader, you can access the chat box function through keystroke alt H or command H if you're using a Mac. We'll answer as many questions as we can and as many as time permits, and we have dedicated um, question time towards the end of the webinar. Welcome Amanda and David. Howdy, howdy. Thanks, Tony. That's okay. Uh, Amanda, can you tell us about Vision Store's partnership with the good guys and how our clients can purchase or potentially have funded the accessible products that David will be discussing shortly? Yeah, so this is something that's come about in recent times. Um, Vision Store are always looking for new and innovative ways to make products accessible to our clients. So we have established, established this supplier relationship with the good guys as a new service offering. Um, the benefits of ordering through Vision Australia is that our staff and service providers understand how to work with those who have vision, uh, vision impairment um, and their funding bodies. So we can therefore provide a more specialised approach to the application process and product training. Um, keep in mind, although we are an NDIS registered provider, we are able to work with many other funding bodies that would also approve the purchase of mainstream products and technology. So I'm going to pass it on to David Woodbridge, who has reviewed many uh, everyday products, but he'll only have the time to speak to us to a few uh, today. So David, would you like to share your opinion on some of your most loved products? I always hate it when people say that I've got only got a limited amount of time. <laughs> um, now, unfortunately, folks, you're not going to be able to see me uh, only probably in my hands because I've got my iPhone camera sitting on a stand and it's pointing right down at a tab where I'm going to show the different products. But I wanted to start with two of my absolute favourite. So I'm just currently leaning down because I won't get the table properly. All right. So... This little gadget, which looks like a very oversized gun if I put it that way, um, this is actually the um, Dyson V10. And the reason why I mentioned the model number is because some of the modern models that I've come across have a touch screen or other similar interface. So this particular one has a nice clicky switch. So I can go from low, medium to high. Um, and it also comes with a range of different brushes. So um, if you're like me, perhaps, and you've got a seeing eye dog, um, I have, where are we? It's amazing. I put these brushes down right next to me and I still can't find the one I want. Here it is. Right. This brush is one of those brushes that you might see in a mother vacuum cleaners. It's got like, it's called a power head. So when you apply the suction to it, the head spins around very rapidly and it's supposed to be very cool in picking up hair, dust, dirt, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and there's about, I want to say there's about seven or eight different um, brushes that you can slot onto this. And it does have a long pole. Of course, you could use it like a standard vacuum cleaner. But what I like about it from a blind person's point of view in particular, I just put it on the end and it's on. Um, nice and straightforward. If that was a pole, the same deal. And then how it sounds, let me just put it on low, press the button, press the trigger button. Okay, so I got the wrong, that's full power down the bottom. Medium is medium. And then up the top is low. And then I can hear it, and I can hear the brush going on the bench. And my dog, God bless her little soul, um, was molting extremely badly. Miss Louise right over there in the corner uh, about a month ago, and her hair was just coming off in 
huge amounts. I didn't work out, I couldn't work out how she had any coat left. And this was perfect because I just went with the vacuum cleaner on, got up all the hair. Um, I didn't have my boys complaining about white dog hair in their school clothes or anything else. Absolutely perfect. So full power, this thing runs for about um, 30, 30 minutes. Um, moderate power, 60, 90, uh, 90 minutes on low power. And when I say low power, because it's a portable vacuum can, you, you're literally only holding the trigger in, doing your quick stuff and letting the trigger go. If you held it down for a long time, of course, it's going to turn off a bit faster. The other nice thing about it is when it gets down low, it'll simply just turn itself off. Now, there's just one little trick I want to show you with this, which caught me off guard when I first did it. Um, when it's got a, um, like most Dyson's, it's got a barrel and you've got it like a trigger here where you can just release it. And then the whole thing, this bottom comes off and you can change the, I'll pull the stuff out of the, the barrel inside it. But I was there happily getting rid of Miss Thea's, uh, Miss Thea's, that's my daughter, what am I talking about? Miss Louisa, my guide dog's hair and it got stuck and i'm just going to show you a tip there is right here is the intake hole where where all the stuff goes in and if that gets jammed particularly with dog hair you turn the it on with that and if that's jammed it'll go and then stop because it doesn't want to burn itself out now nobody told me about that um so here one more my wife and i really did take it back to um the good guys, you know, brand new vacuum cleaner, obviously broken, blah, blah, blah. And it was purely that. It was only because my wife watched the YouTube video. They went, oh, yeah, it's blocked. That's what that zh zh noise means. So really good vacuum cleaner. It's extremely powerful. Um, as I said, I use it for dust busting around the house, including my guide dog's uh, dog bed, um, kitchen area, under lounges, um, if I accidentally break open one of those things, you're getting computer bag bags with the little little silicon things inside them, which I've done before. I do it that with it. I've done the car, all that sort of stuff. So really, really good vacuum cleaner. And you can sit it like that. So it'll stand up if you want to put it somewhere. The other thing is, um, this is where you plug it in the power. And then if it runs out of padding, it'll plug it in. The trick is, if it's receiving power and you try and turn it on, it won't turn on. And that's how you know it's getting power. So that's the Dyson V10 um, portable vacuum cleaner. Really, really cool, that one. All right. Now, the other one, unfortunately, I can't bring it in front of the camera because it's too big. Um, but this is the remote for it. And I'm going to be talking about the uh, Dyson air purifier cooling and heating fan. And if you've ever seen one of these uh, in the shops anywhere, the good guys, then I always like to say to people, if you can imagine a oval, so it's got a hollow, hollow inside, so like a big squash capital O, uh, and then with a base down the bottom, that's what the fan looks like. And as I just said, it does air purification, it does cooling, and it's not just normal air, it actually really does cool the air a bit, and of course, heat. So you've got a three-in-one device, that sort of drum shape that I just mentioned down the bottom, it contains both your carbon filter and your HEPA filter. And of course the HEPA filter is the stuff that gets rid of nasty microscopic things in the air to make you breathe easier and so on. Um, and it's very easy to set up. I literally just plugged it into power. Sorry, wrong way around. I put the HEPA filters on first, uh, close the two sides of the bottom, which click in quite easily put it on power. There's a button um, at the bottom of that uh, oval shape. I turned it on. And then what I got amazed about was that besides the little LCD screen, which for a blind person is <clears throat> not very accessible, I discovered uh, that you can also get the Dyson Link app that I can use on my iPhone. And I can, with that one, I can change the fan speed. I can change the heat. I can turn it on to cool, to heat. I can change the oscillation because this, because it's sitting on that base, um, the fan actually rotates 354 degrees. Um, so almost in a full circle. And you can also get it to tilt backwards and forwards. So at the moment, the fan sitting behind me here at my dining room table, and I've got it tilted back. So when the air comes out of the front of it, 
I've got it tilted back so the air goes up over the table. It's not it's not hitting the table, not going anywhere else in the room. So that's just really cool. So that's all done via the Dyson um, Link app. And so my wife doesn't get annoyed by the light at night time. You can put it in night mode. And what that does, it dims that little LCD screen I was talking about. Because on that screen, there's all the information about air purification, the humidity, the current temperature in the room, all the stuff that a sighted person would normally want to have a look at. So night mode actually dims that display. But one final thing I wanted to actually demonstrate, because this is the, this is the cool bit for me at least, I can control the Dyson purifier um, completely from the actual Amazon Echo. So I've called my Amazon here computer. So if I just say computer, computer, ask Dyson to turn on. Your purifier is now on. Okay, so I can hear the fan going. Computer, ask Dyson to set fan. Let's start again. Computer, Your ask purifier. Dyson to set fan speed to nine. Your purifier is now set to speed nine. Okay, so that's the that's the the Dyson purification, cooling, and heating system um, going at rates. As I say, nine. Um, and if I want to stop or check the, the oscillation going around and around and around. I can say, computer, turn oscillation mode off. Get to what oscillation mode? Off. Get to what oscillation mode? Oh, come on. Off. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, yes, smart speaker, sweet. All right, let's try another one. Computer, ask Dyson to check filter. No, I think my, my, my noise of the fans coming through my mic. Hang on a right, I just turned it off with the remote. Let's try again. Computer, ask Dyson to check filter. Here's your filter light information. Your particulate filter has 97% remaining and your carbon filter has 97% left. Okay, just stop. Because for me, that's actually very important because one of the things I can't check via the Dyson Link app, because I'm blind, and the other one, that, of course, because I can't see the LCD screen, is I don't know when the filters need to get changed. Um, because this will literally tell you when the filters get low. So they're currently at 97%. I've had it for a couple of weeks um, when it's time to actually change your filters. Um, so I can turn by my voice, I can turn on and off night mode, on and off oscillation mode, on and off heat mode, cooling mode, change the fan speed um, and everything else. Because what I find sometimes on this remote, the physical one here, is I'm always frightened of pressing the wrong button and putting the fan into the wrong mode that I get stuck on. Because on this remote, I've got on and off, which is fine, I can deal with that one. Then I've got an info button, which visually I can't access. These, this left and right rocker one up and down for plus and minus. The left one is increased fan speed, the right one's heat, so that's okay. But when I get to these other ones down the bottom here, these are really to do with different modes. So the safe one here is cooling and the one diagonally down to my left is, um, sorry, cooling here and the one down to my diagonally to the left is the oscillation mode. But because the buttons to me are fairly flat and a little bit hard for me to orientate, I'm always a bit nervous that I'm gonna hit the wrong button. So the only one that I tend to use is the one top left hand side, because when I press it, it actually makes a really light beep sound, which you won't be able to hear through the microphone. Um, and it's basically letting me know that when I've turned on and off the Dyson. So now it's on again. So let me just do computer, ask Dyson to set fan speed to two. Your purifier is now set to speed two. Computer, ask Dyson to set heat. Your purifier is not currently heating the room. I know that. Computer, ask Dyson to turn on heat. Heat 
eating mode is now on. Beautiful. And then I've now already, if I put my hand in front of the heater, yep, I've already got the heat coming out of that O shaped. So where I said it was like an oval or a squash capital O, if you can imagine the slot right around the front edge, going right around the whole device, um, that's where the, the beautiful heat's coming out because it's about 18 degrees here on the central coast today. And if I really wanted to, I could go to the unit itself and press that big button at the front down the bottom. And I've also turned it off. So it's a really good device to be able to access three different ways. I can do it from the remote if I really have to. Like I just said, I really do it for turning it on and off um, via the Dyson Link app. Now I've only tried this with VoiceOver in particular, the screen reader on my iPhone. I haven't tried it with the Android app yet, but I can't see any reason why it wouldn't work. And of course, if you've got an Echo, um, the Echo one works perfectly well. And as you could tell, sometimes I sometimes forget the correct syntax, like we always do when we're using skills on the Amazon Echo, about which words you're supposed to get to affect the right result. But overall, it's a really, really good experience. So that's the Dyson app. Uh, sorry, that's the Dyson fan. So that's the Dyson air purification, cooling and heating fan. Price wise, I want to say it's about $800. So it's not cheap. But then again, you're getting three devices in one. Um, and I think it came in, Amanda, if I'm correct. I think I know this one's white. And I think the other one was black, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I think um, they call it a nickel colour, which is like a dark grey titanium. Oh, sort of. okay. Yeah. Yep. Cool. All right. So Do you that know one's how cool. energy efficient it is, David and Amanda? No, I don't. No. But, but keep in mind, because this is a, quote, smart, unquote, unit, it will monitor it itself. So when I've, when I've got it just on, say, I can turn off heat mode, and let's just say leave it on cooling mode, and then I put it on auto. So what it does, it only invokes itself if it gets hot in the room, if it detects any particles in the air, um, and the the actual the the, the I was going to say the, the the diffuser, the purification system only kicks in when it needs to. So it's actually at the moment it's not, it, it doesn't actually run all the time. I've got this literally sitting on the chair in its automatic mode, which means it's taking care of the air in the room and the air quality, and it only kicks in when it has to. So from that point of view, no, it's not like you're running the fan itself as in, you know, blowing hot air or cool air all day. It's literally sitting there on standby monitoring your environment. Uh, good point. There was no pricing for the first item in. I love it because I can hear voiceover talking to me. Um, that vacuum cleaner, again, it was a bit pricey. It um, was about $900. But again, um, I spent a whole 40 minutes in the good guys not arguing, but a vigorous discussion with the salesperson <laughs> because I, I really needed one that was one, easy to use. Uh, two, I could tell what I was charging. And yeah, absolutely. And three, <laughs> and three, um, I, I, I just, I also had to have it, and this is going to sound weird. I like the feel of things in your hand because I'm blind, I guess. So when I tried it, all the other ones, like the Samsung ones, the LG, you know when sometimes you touch a product and you think, oh, that just doesn't feel right and solid because I'm not the most delicate person with equipment in the world. Um, the Dyson one felt really firm. Ah, one final point about the um, this heater one, because it looks like it's a nice big round circle at the top, do not be tempted to pick it up from that bit. You've got to pick it up from the bottom Otherwise, you will break the electronics to allow it to actually circle backwards and forwards and do it front and back. Um, and that will void your warranty if you admit to picking the unit up from the top. Um, they even warn you when you get it out of the box, do not get it out of the box by the top part of the unit um, because you, will, you could in intentionally or unintentionally break the unit. Um, and of course, just quietly, that's what I was very gentle and I did get it out from the top because I thought, oh, good. Here's a big round shape for me to put my hand through and pull. But I was doing it gently. So I hope it would still work. So I'm safe. But for you in the future, um, don't do that. You're not supposed to. 
All right. So so far, so that's the Dyson. So that's the Dyson uh, portable vacuum cleaner. It's the Dyson fan. So like I said, two of my favorite new gadgets. Now I thought I'd move on to, um, I'm going to, have to quickly talk about smart speakers and then, I want to, and then I want to move on to air fryers um, and mainly for low vision people with the air fryers. Um, so the first one, because I'm an Apple geek at heart, the people that know me, this is a nice big HomePod. Uh, and of course, this works with Siri. This is probably more of a music system first and a smart speaker second. But I use this all the time to find my Apple Watch, find my phone. If I'm cooking in the kitchen, just over to my right where I'm sitting, I'll yell at the uh, HomePod and say, H-E-Y, Siri, magic word. Ring Ellen, my wife to see if she could pick up something from um, Audi on the way home or, you know, when time she's living karate with the boys. So I'm completely doing hands-free via the home pod. Um, this one still hasn't come down in price really over the years, of course, because being Apple, I guess a bit, um, still about $480. Uh, it's still a very good speaker. I'm still appreciative that I've actually bought the one. Um, I've currently got it. I've got three in my house at the moment. So this one's currently unplugged so we don't get confused. The other one's sitting on my top of my clock in the corner. Um, so if I do, hey Siri, play some chill out music. Um, I think you might be fine. Oh, why does she have to talk like she's being cool? There we go. If you ever heard my podcast, I always do demos with chill out type music. Hey Siri, stop. Uh, so it really is good. And of course, as I just said, I use it for finding my iPhone SE, iPhone 8 and iPhone 11 all the time because I tend to put things down and forget where I put them. So this speaker, because I've got them right around the house, in the middle and the front and the back, I can just yell out to the closest HomePod smart speaker and off I go. So really handy if you're in the Apple ecosystem. I've also I've got this controlling my um, couple of my switches around the house, uh, controls my bathroom lights, the fan in the bathroom, the exhaust fan, the boys fans in their bedrooms um, and a few other things around the house. So again, it's still a smart speaker, but uh, it really does work within the, the Apple ecosystem home kit type stuff. All right. So that was the home pod. Now, the reason why this is, can I say it's my second favorite? Because I might get ejected from the upper pyramid if I say it's my first favorite. So this is an Amazon Echo third generation. As you might have noticed on media recently, they've just announced a fourth generation of the Amazon Echo Dot fourth edition. Now, I don't have this one here. here. It's currently sitting in the lounge room, but on the front here, in the one in the lounge room, there's a really nice bright LCD screen. <coughs> so if you're a sighted person or a vision person, you can wander past your entertainment unit and see what the time is. So that's really handy. Now, of course, being an Amazon Echo, this is exactly what I was using that I was saying the word computer to, because keep in mind with the, uh, the Echo range, you can change the names of your any Echo you want. So in my house, um, I've got Alexa, I've got computer, I've got Amazon, <coughs> excuse me. So I've got them all different names because I've got so many around the house. So <clears throat> if I want to turn on my air conditioner, which is currently the other end of the house, I can say computer, turn on air con. And I've just heard a beep from the other end of the house and my air cons come on, stop. Computer, set aircon to cool. It's set to cool. Okay, and the fans just speed has just gone up. Computer, set aircon to 20 degrees Celsius. <coughs> and so I don't annoy my wife. Computer, turn off aircon. Beautiful. All right, so that's off. Now, stop. Now, 
the reason why that works is now this particular thing that I've got only works on what we call a split system, which most people know about. That's the one where you've got the compressor outside and you've got the head, the main fan head inside on your wall. And what I'm basically doing, I've got a little third party product called a Sensibo device, S-E-N-S-I-B-O, Sensibo. And that's basically replicating the remote control that I would use for the air conditioner. <coughs> so that's where all the commands are coming from, is from that unit. And then I've installed basically the Sensibo skill running on my Amazon Echo here. And like the Dyson uh, air purifier, the trick with these systems that need some sort of account to, to work, you simply log in with your Dyson account, or in this case, the Sensibo account, and then it knows where to talk to different things. Um, now, so I said the main reason why I had a HomePod because I'm, I'm an Apple person. The reason why I've got an Amazon Echo because it works with the Dyson, it works with my air conditioner, but <clears throat> this is the two things, a couple of things it stands out for. I can say, computer, read my last Audible book. Resuming the Nowhere Man. Alan Moore, Swamp Thing. The truth will set you free, but not until it is finished with you. David Foster Wallace, Infinite Chess. One, what he needs to know. Stop. Computer, read my last Kindle book. Resuming your most recent book, Ether's Guide, Ether's Revival Book 2. Do you think your father would come for the wedding, if he could? Yukiko asked after a moment of silence. Gregory exhaled slowly, conflicted on the question. I don't know. I think he would now, but a year ago. No, he'd never come near this place. Stop. Because up until this point, the HomePod sadly still does not read out the books from Apple, whether they're audio or text-to-speech, where if you've got an audible.com.au account or you've got an Amazon Kindle account, you can listen to your audio books with human narration or your Kindle books with electronic speech. Absolutely incredible, which is brilliant. Um, and I'll just explain the last two, the reasons, oh, sorry, the last three reasons why I love the Echo so much. Number one, you can set proper reminders to go off and it repeat itself twice over a 30 second period. So in the mornings, rather than dad nagging the boys to get moving, I've got things like, um, have you checked your, uh, have you checked your bags? Do you have your lunch? And then some of them are sort of a countdown timer. So I've got one set for, you've got, you know, 20 minutes to go to the bus, 10 minutes to go, get out the door, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, and I've got them set um, mainly in their bedrooms because I can set different responses for different um, echoes around the house. But the other really nice thing is um, I can also drop into any echo around the house if I need to. So my son has got epilepsy um, and he's prone or maybe prone to falling in the shower. So I say to him normally, if I don't hear you come out of the shower within 10 minutes, I'm going, to be, I'm going to drop into the echo that's nearest the bathroom and I've got it turned up fairly loud so then I can just yell out from nowhere matter if I'm outside, for example. I can just say, uh, drop into hallway echo, Owen, are you okay? And he just basically can yell out and say, yes, I'm fine, Dad. Go away, leave me alone, whatever teenagers say to parents. And it's fine. So that's the other reason why I absolutely love the, um, the Amazon Echoes. So they sell a range of the good guys. So you can get this one, which is the Amazon Echo Dot. Um, you can also get, now, this particular one is the second edition. It's not the current one. This is what they call the Echo or the Echo Plus. This has got a built-in hub, so it's easy to connect third-party switches to. Um, and this one's really chunky. It really boosts out a good sound because it's actually got a bit of a subwoofer inside it. Uh, and the same with this one. You've got your buttons on top. You've got volume up and down. You've got an action button, which I was pressing to stop the audio then and the microphone mute and unmute, and the same one on this one. Um, so two really good speakers. So this one's probably about, I want to say, and I'm only guessing the prices here roughly, but this one's probably about $75. I want to say the one with the clock's about $99. 
This bigger one is about $150. Uh, but these are two of my favorite echoes. So if I want a bit more music rather than smart speaker, I'll use this one. If I just want to use a smart speaker with a okay music, then this one's okay. So um, again, I've got the pleasure of being able to switch between smart speakers depending on what I'm doing with my Apple stuff or what I'm doing with my third party stuff. Now, the last set of speakers I want to show you, and again, I've got the previous edition of this, not the current one. This is, this, so the original one of this was called the, um, the Google Home. It's now called the Google Nest, like all the, the Google products now. So you've got the Nest Mini, the Nest Home, and the Nest Hub, which is the, this one, the previous version of. Um, it does come with a screen reader, though it's very primitive, but uh, for side people in my house, they love it because when you bring a recipe up on the screen, you can read it while you're cooking. Of course, you can also go, hey, Google, and get it to read back. Stop. <laughs> um, so all the smart things... Sorry, if... I can't do that on this device yet. I know you can't. Thank you for that. Can you just stop, please? Sorry, please. I'll stop. Thank you. Just doing my job. <laughs> Good for you. All right, so uh, so this will do all the similar things that my Amazon Echo does. So I've got this also linked up because I've got the Dyson link that I haven't checked out yet. I could use the Dyson one. I can use the Sensibo one on my air conditioner. Um, I can only play Google audio books. I can't play the electronic version of the, the, um, the stuff out of the Google bookstore, but my main reason, and I just wish there were smart speakers that had these all in one device, not three different products or manufacturers, is, hey, Google, when's the next train from Gosford Station to Strathfield? The best way to get from Gosford to Strathfield by train is to catch Central Coast and Newcastle Line departing at 1.05 p.m. It'll take about one hour and 32 minutes to get there. Hey Google, when is the next... I hate when it does that. Let me just wait till it times out. Hey Google, when is the next train from... Sorry, I don't know how to help with that. Here are other things you can try. Stop that. Hey Google, when is the next... When is the next train from Parramatta to Strathfield? The best way to get from Strathfield to your current location by train is to catch Central Coast. Never mind. It's, it's, it's being a typical, it's being a, I'm just going to turn that down and just ignore it now. Um, so like all live demos, it tends to go straight, but seriously what I can really do, if it, and it does work, I promise, um, is I can ask it for the next bus right around the corner from me to get to Gosford Station. Um, so it'll tell me the next bus 36, which is leaving, you know, whatever time it leaves. Um, the train, it normally wants to go on where you're currently located. So that's where it works best. So if I was sitting in Vision Australia at Parramatta, it would tell me the next train from Parramatta Station to say Stratford where I can get off and catch the Central Coast train home. So that's the Nest. Now I believe the Nest Hub, the new one, comes with a camera. Um, I'm not 100% sure because I actually haven't seen the new one yet. Um, the little version of that, of course, was called the Google Mini, now called the Nest Mini. Now, this is the previous version of it. Um, let me just move the Nest aside, the hub. Um, and the same deal, pure voice, um, no screen, of course, on this one. As I understand it, the new one does have better sound. Um, actually, let me just play some music out of the Nest and see what it sounds like. Hey, Google, play some chill out music. Sure, here's a Spotify playlist called Chill Out Music. Hey Google, stop. Now that's, this, this little hub's also got a bit of a subwoofer inside. Now it's a bit hard to tell over a microphone, particularly because I'm wearing AirPods at the moment. Um, but the sound of the new Nest Mini over this one is quite substantial. So if he says if he can reach it, if you compare the sound of the old Echo Dot second generation, this little one, to the third generation, even the fourth generation, 
This one was really meant to be a smart speaker and the music one last because the sound quality coming out of this was fairly appalling. Um, you could link it up and, you know, link it up to Bluetooth speakers or plug a bigger speaker or headphones into it. Uh, but the sound out of the new Amazon Dot, this one, um, is absolutely amazing. So if you've heard the, the previous versions of both the, the tiny Echoes and the tiny Google Minis, um, it's completely different. Now the sound is absolutely beautiful. Um, so if you're a bit of a music lover and you like a bit of bass and you can hear the trebles and the mid ranges, absolutely beautiful. All right, so that's what I wanted to cover with the smart speakers. Let me just put some of this stuff away from me so I don't get confused. Um, now the other one that I can't, haven't got here at the moment, um, and Amanda can add a few things, particularly the low vision point of view, but I want to talk about the, tef the TEFL, and I always get that mispronounced, it's T-I-F-A-L, TEFL OptiGrill. So this is basically an air fryer. And the nice thing about this particular grill is that besides having six manual modes, it's got uh, automatic modes for things like uh, sausages, meat, sandwiches, uh, steak, all that sort of stuff. Now, whilst the automatic mode, um, and I thought, oh, wouldn't this be cool if it had an object recognition that it actually worked out what type of product you were putting inside the air fryer, uh, no, it doesn't. But what it will do is it will sense how thick, especially say the how thickness of the sausages or how thick the sandwiches or how thick the uh, steak is, for example. Uh, and then automatically it will determine the correct heat for it. Um, and the nice thing about this one is that the handle on the front of it is also one of those handles that doesn't get hot, so you can still touch the front of it. Um, as of most air fryers or some that I've come across, they're very easy to clean. Um, in some ways, they're probably a lot healthier for you, but don't, don't quote me on that one because I'm not a, a, a health person. And from a low vision point of view, um, the buttons to control the unit are, if you've ever seen the induction hob uh, that we sell at Vision Australia in the Vision Store, they're like those buttons, so fairly easy to see. But when you're cooking, you do get lights that tell you the progress, I'm assuming, um, Amanda, yeah. of how it's cooking. So it is really from a low vision point of view, isn't it, the use of this um, air fryer? Yeah, I know it's been an OT favourite for a long time in, um, in terms of the cooking space for our vision impaired clients. Um, so yes, as you were saying, there is a row of buttons um, that are slightly raised and from memory, they do have a picture on them um, as to what kind of meat they are. So, you know, you've got your sausage, your seafood, your red meat, your poultry um, sandwiches. And then on the right hand side, there is an LED indicator. So depending on how far um, cooked through it is, so for example, if you pop in a steak, you press the steak button. Um, when it's rare, off the top of my head, it could be, you know, a blue sort of light. And then as it turns into medium, the light will then change to a red color. Um, don't quote me on those, the colors of the lights, but <laughs> just an example to show you how mm. um, it progresses through being cooked. Um, and the light indicator is fairly large. I would say it's about seven centimeters in diameter. Um, but yes, it, it does use uh, color to indicate, you know, how well it is cooked. So that's something that's, that's available. Yeah, look, I'm, um, I'm probably going to be buying one sooner than later anyway, and I may not necessarily buy that one. I might blind, buy one that's a bit more, quote, blind friendly, unquote. Um, but we often go into the good guys and have a wander around the shops. Amanda and I spent a whole day there last year looking at some of the really cool stuff because remember by the stuff, to, besides the stuff today, you can really get most consumable items for the home and lots of electronic items like uh, power banks, USB adapters, uh, USB chargers. You can get different types of AM, FM, digital radios. You can get Bluetooth speakers. You can get smart switches, TVs, fans, washing machines, dryers, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the other thing um, I don't have with me at the dining room table because it's too big is my smart television. Um, my audio is not clear. Is it okay now? Amanda, can you hear my audio okay? Okay. Uh, we can hear fine you. We're fine. Me, yeah. Okay. It might just be the fact that I'm using AirPods, unfortunately. Uh, and also to the bandwidth, depending on how you're getting the audio, may also be affected as well. Um, all right. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll try and talk a bit slower so it's easier to listen to me over a poor bandwidth maybe as well. I'm not sure. But 
So smart TVs, the rule of thumb these days, particularly with the Samsung TVs, is that if you buy a current Samsung TV, then it will have the voice assistant built into it. Now, that's a statement that I got from Samsung last year when they did a demonstration of Samsung products at Qiong in Melbourne, because the question was asked, how do we know which Samsung has all the accessibility stuff in it, such as the low vision, high contrast, uh, the bigger menus, audio description, and of course the voice assistant for blind people. And they were most emphatic upon the fact that uh, all new Samsung televisions have built-in accessibility. So you don't really need to worry now. What you need to worry about now, I guess, is you know what the family likes in particular. Do they want a 60 inch, an 80 inch? Do they want just an LED or a, a QLED? Do they want 4K? Uh, all that sort of stuff that lovely side of people sorry side of people go on with um, and the one I've got in the uh, the toy room um, it used to be called the toy room and my children were small and it's still called the toy room even now they're actually 16 and 15 um, but it's lovely because the boys know how to turn the speech on and off and when I'm talking about speech I mean speech output not speech input I can talk into it via the remote but I find that's a bit iffy um, quite a few of the new TVs that I've heard about now do actually have Alexa built in. Um, so that's also another good one. So with the smart, with the smart TV, um, like I said, you can turn all the stuff on and off um, via the accessible menu, audio description, large print, voice assistant, all that sort of cool stuff. If you have access to the ABC or SBS via the digital um, aerial, um, or the new free to, basically free to wear these days, um, you will get the audio descriptions for 14 hours of TV every week on both SBS and ABC. And I was very pleased to find out that, um, and being a granddad, this probably sounds a bit odd, or being a 55 year old person, um, I was actually first time in my life having play skill audio described to me. So I actually got to find out what, what the, the different windows really look like um and what some of the other things they were doing when they were skipping around and doing other things that the, the guys do on guys and girls do on the show so that was really cool so that will also be available to you as well um tony or amanda can i do a bit of a time check how are we going yeah. for time? <laughs> we have about um just over 15 minutes left so if it's okay yeah. would you like to answer some questions from our uh, uh, participants can i just can i just do one more if i'm really really quick Sure, I will allow that. <laughs> All right, I'm currently wearing this. This is my Apple Watch SE. So this is the new watch that came out from Apple. Now, I've updated this one from an Apple Watch S3. So people that have got the S4 and the S5 may not be as excited as I am. But what I found with the, uh, the S6, the voiceover, the screen reader that I use to make it read the screen, it feels like I'm using voiceover on my iPhone and my iPad. It's extremely responsive. And the other thing I've noticed is when I use the workout app to do my sparring on the, um, on our WaveMaster boxing thing outside, when I use the stepper up and down to do my steps, um, when I do my treadmill indoor walk, all that sort of stuff, I can actually use the workout app, excuse me, very effectively with voiceover. And the only main difference between the iPhone S6, so the iPhone S6, the Apple Watch S6 and the Apple Watch SE is I believe that the innards are like the S5. You don't get the always on display that you do with the S6 as opposed to the SE. And the other one is that you don't have the blood oxygen uh, sensor to check how your blood oxygen level is going with your breathing in and being you know your oxygen being issue with your bloodstream but everything else is practically the same so if you want to save a bit of money then go for the se over the apple watch s6 and as a quick tip if you want to buy one of those solo bands that uh, they're basically a whole rubber band that you slot on your wrist and you've got to get different sizes for it i've just heard too many horror stories about people not sizing themselves properly online um, and they don't fit so what I suggest, if you want one of those cool solo bands, now that they've got multiple colours, and then like I said, they're just a band that you pull on your wrist, of course, attached to your watch, um, 
when you can, go into an Apple store and have them fitted properly. Don't do it online because you'll waste your money. But as with all Apple watches, you can change um, any bands. This one I've got is that um, just a nylon band that's got good old, I would have to say Velcro, it doesn't matter, Velcro anyway. Velcro I can just pull off, resize, put back on again. And it's really good if you're exercising. So that's the Apple Watch um, S6. I'm getting this confused now. Apple Watch S6 and the Apple Watch SE. And um, really good value now. So I finished, Tony. How was that been quick? Very quick. Thank you, David. Thank you. <laughs> um, one of the questions was can you name the model of the air fryer again, please? I'll yep, answer that one. That was the uh, TFL Opti Grill. Um, so I think it's it's a grill plate. I think the air fryer, David, we might have mixed that up with something else we wanted to talk about but didn't have time to oh, fit sorry, that in. Oh, yeah, sorry, that was me. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. So, yes, yeah, so Tifa Opti Grill. There are um, variations of the model and the sizes mm. that um, you can purchase. But yeah. if you have a look on the Good Guys website or um, Good Guys mm. store, pretty much anything that they have within their range is what we'll have access to as well. Yeah. Thank you, Amanda. Um, another question we had from Sabrina, how do you deal with other electronic appliances with remote control that cannot be connected to any environmental control unit? That's a really good question, that one. So my first response to that, I, so I, if, if, it's got a, if it's got a physical remote um, and they've got good buttons on it, not too many modey type things, that's the first thing I look for. Um, the second thing I look for is if it does have a dreaded touchscreen, such as washing machines or coffee machines, and I've got a coffee machine sitting over in my kitchen at the moment that weighs about 20 kilos, so I didn't move it. It's got a touchscreen, but it's got an app to drive it. So when I heard a <clears throat> good guy's app about four years ago, exactly about one week ago, I said to my wife, oh, that DeLonghi Prima Donna coffee machine comes with an app and it grinds your own coffee. You can put water into it. It does milk, it does hot chocolate, it does hot water. Wouldn't that be really cool if we christened our brand new kitchen with a brand new coffee machine that I can control from my iPhone or my Android device? So we bought it. Um, <laughs> and um, the app works extremely well. So I don't have to use the touch screen because that's the only way you can use the coffee machine. The app works perfectly. So. What I did in that case was I went to the store and the lovely salesperson allowed me to link up my iPhone running the Coffee Link app for the DeLonghi machine and I could check it there on the spot because you know what it's like with accessibility. It's like, oh yeah, look, absolutely, it'll, it'll work. It's a smart thing or it comes with an app, of course it'll work. And as we all know, that's not always the case. Um, so we always put it, we always put it back to testing first then or try trial and then you buy thank you david um a question with from lynette with kindle books do you need to have the audio version or will it read from text it will read from text so i've got so i've got two accounts i've got an audible account with amazon which is the narration and the kindle one is just all normal e-texts or electronic books and they're reading out with the electronic voice excellent I have a question from um, Thai. I hope I pronounced it right. Um, do you have any equipment for people who speak other languages um, other than English? So I'm assuming um, Thai might be referring to um, reading a document um, in another language. Is I hope that's what your question is um, alluding to. Yeah. Um, if that's the case, then there are um, standalone reading machines um, that are available. Um, model name would be the Clear Reader Plus um, from Quantum and the Read Easy Move, sorry, the Read Easy Evolve um, from Humanware, which you can also purchase through Vision Store. And the standalone reading machines, um, if you have anything that has printed text, it will scan the page and read aloud the document to you um, in your preferred language. Yeah. So Andy, if, you're, if you're asking about also speech output as far as the talking Google Home, the HomePod or the Amazon Echo, yes, you can get them to talk out in different languages because they're based on your region and then your region, you can choose your own language. So they're normally covered by most of the Latin based languages. So things like German, Italian, French, all those sort of ones. Um, and I believe on the iPhone, we've got Japanese covered as well. 
Um, and of course, you know, most of these things will also speak Chinese and, and so on. So it just depends on your language you want to use for both, you know, talking to it and it speaking back to you. Excellent. Speaking on the smart speakers, does Amazon Echo work with any device? Is it compatible with most devices? No. <laughs> is the, is the answer. So basically what they so basically what they say is most most things will tell you what they work with. So most things like for example the TP link switch. Um, I don't know if that necessarily works. It only works with I think the iPhone if you run the app, but it'll work fairly well with like the Android and the Amazon Echo and the Google Home. What I normally do is when you go into shop and you think, look, all I want is a switch to turn the lamp on and off because the person forgets to turn them on and off. Um, or I wanted something to turn the radio on, something to say, hey, switch name, like such as kitchen radio, turn my kitchen radio on. So normally you, you say to a person, look, I use a Google Home or I use a HomePod or I use an Echo, and then they will normally tell you what switch is appropriate. So for example, if I wanted to turn the lamp on in my lounge room next to the chair where I sit at night time, um, then that only works with the HomePod and it doesn't work with anything else, that one. Thanks, David. Um, another question um, from Sharon. Have you experienced, have you had much experience with smart globes? I've tried a few and cannot get them to connect to my Google Home. Um, any comments about that? Yeah, look, smart globes are cool. Um, these are the ones that you get them to change dimness and also my, my son loves them, or my, both my sons, because you get them to change colour. So you can have purple, Mars, red, blah, blah, blah. Um, the ones that I've had most success at, and I think the good guys sell them, they're called LIFX smart globes. Um, they work on both Google, Echo and Apple stuff. So I can say I've got one set up in the toy room and my son's got one set up in the toy room where he's got his music synthesizer and everything else in there. So he can actually say to it, uh, turn on my gadget lamp because that's what he calls it. That's what his name is, switch. And by the way, so, the, so I'm going to say the switch. The globe is the switch. So you simply put the globe in a lamp so that whole lamp becomes the smart globe. You link it up to an app normally, and then you can control the smart globe via your voice or via the app. And look, the one in my son's, uh, like I said, the toy room has been perfect. The one in my son's bedroom has been nothing but a nightmare. I can't get it going. So it's two of the exact same globes, same Wi-Fi network. One works 100%, one works absolutely horribly. So I think smart globes are a little bit hit and miss. So overall, I tend to go for switches that are things you plug into the wall and then you plug your appliance into that switch on the wall, give it a name and then control your plugged in thing. Thanks, David. A question for you, Amanda. How would one um, order these products if they uh, if the client was interested? Yeah, so um, as I said before, point of reference um, to find out what products you are interested in is to browse the good guys range because we do have full access to that. So um, whether it be, you know, smart home, a complete smart home setup with fridges, your smart TV, um, washing machines and the lot, keyboards. Um, also, with, I think there was a question as well about some surveillance cameras. Um, so whatever is available through the good guys, we can supply. I was also having a look at um, some of the massage devices, which would be good for... Um, especially those who have diabetes in terms of getting that circulation down to the feet. Um, so like I said, full range um, is something that we have access to. All you'll have to do is just email visionstore at visionaustralia.org. Um, Vision store is one word. And just um, pop in some details. So the name, the shipping address, products that are interested in and the relevant funding body, um, if that does apply to that particular client. We will put a quote together and send that back to you. And if we need to make a referral to services, um, we'll have a conversation um, regarding that aspect. Thanks, Amanda. Okay. Um, looking at another question. Um, what are some of the best and reliable accessible devices when walking around different locations? A question by Joel, David. Yeah, look, I might need to leave that for another talk because that's outside of the stuff we're talking about today. And that's a really interesting topic, that one. So I think when we talk about wearables, I think Tony, next time we might even cover that because that's a really, 
it's not an easy thing to answer. So I prefer to leave that to another uh, webinar because there's lots of ins and outs and I really don't want to give you a 30 second answer when it's so complicated. <laughs> the other thing, Tony, I just wanted to, wanted to add was I just saw a question about um, how good is the home pod for finding somebody's phone in the house if they put it down somewhere. Uh, I can simply say to HUY -E Siri, and I won't do it now, but I can say HUY -E Siri, find my iPhone S, find my iPhone 8, find my iPhone 11, even find my Apple Watch. And because it knows it's me and I'm on the same Wi-Fi network, it'll make the phone or the watch play a sound and it will keep playing until I've found it, exclamation mark, and you can do it that way. So really good people that have got memory issues or are blind and so on, you can just say, hey, GY Siri, find, and what the device name is, and off it'll go and it'll find it for you. Excellent. Um... A question from Lily. Can you can the good guy supply a simple voice recorder? Uh, Amanda, I assume that would be a yes. You just need to browse the good guys um, website or if you um, can go to your local good guys um, store to, to browse and then we can sort of purchase it on your behalf. Mm. Um, let's see, a couple of more questions. Uh, David, <laughs> phone wise, what do you think is better, Apple or Samsung? Apple. Apple? Okay, <laughs> let me just, all right, let me, let me, let me, let, what's the word? Let me just back it up with some information first. All right, so. Um, well, in terms of right. accessibility then. Okay, so the, the, the rule of thumb, and I still think this is, this is true even today, if you are a blind person, particularly if you want to use speech output, speech input, and you want to use Braille, then it's still the Apple stuff. If you're a low vision person, um, the low vision stuff on the Samsung devices are extremely good. The Bixby in the Samsung um, devices is a joke. Everybody knows that's a joke. It doesn't work that well at all compared to what Siri and OK Google does. Uh, and the Braille support is still fairly minimalistic, even though it's getting a lot better. So my rule of thumb still is if you're a, Blind person, Apple, if you're low vision or a bit of a techie blind person, then Samsung. Keep in mind that most of the Samsung products now have gone to face ID, not touch ID. And that's why I still recommend this particular phone. So this is the iPhone SE and it's still got a home button because some people still find it hard to use face ID or well, they turn off face ID and just use a pin code or have their phone unprotected. But I'm still finding that a home button is great but you know i've got an i've got a samsung s10 that i use for testing it works really well the face id works fine on it um but i just find i've got to work a little bit harder to navigate than i do when i use my iphone with voiceover so i've had my iphone now for 11 years i've been playing with samsung's now for maybe about six or seven years so it's not like i just, I just picked up a samsung a week ago i still use both of them all the time in fact, I'll let you end up know to a story. The app on my coffee machine, the app is a lot better on my Samsung phone with the DeLonghi coffee machine than it is on the Apple one. Excellent. Amanda, um, does the good guys offer home delivery uh, and training? So it does offer um, home delivery. On some products, it will um, further offer installation. Um, so it could be for some of your larger white goods, such as fridges, um, but that's not available on all products. So when you send us um, an email about what you're interested in, we'll let you know whether that's an option. Um, the second part to your question, Tony, sorry, that just missed me was... <laughs> uh, that's regarding training. So I assume... The, the clients can book training um, with our adaptive technology specialist. Yes, yes. And that's the benefit of booking through Vision Australia is that we understand how to work with um, you guys who have low vision. Um, and so our training can therefore be a little bit more specialised than as it would be than just going into the good guy's store and asking for help. Thank you. We've run out of time, unfortunately. So with all other questions, um, please... Uh, contact the Vision Store team on either 1300 847466 or you can email us at visionstore at visionaustralia.org. Uh, Vision Store is one uh, word. 
If you have any further questions on what was discussed in today's webinar, thank you so much, Amanda and David, for joining me in our very first Exploring Tech uh, webinar. It was very um, fun and engaging, and I've learned lots as well. Um, so thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, at the end of the webinar, there will be a short survey for you to complete. Any feedback that you can provide will assist us in improving our content and delivery, and delivery of future webinars. We'd love for you to join us for our next uh, Exploring Technology with um, David Woodbridge webinar next month. Uh, the topic is still to be confirmed, but we please check your emails and our website for further details. Thank you so much for joining us and goodbye. Thank you.